Welcome back to the channel, true crime enthusiasts. If you're like me, you find yourself endlessly fascinated by the dark corners of human history. Those chilling tales that make you question everything and have you sleeping with the lights on? Well, today, we're diving headfirst into a pool of such stories. Get ready to explore the truly disturbing, the deeply unsettling, the kind of cases that stick with you long after the video ends. We're talking about the creepiest, most bone-chilling true crime stories out there. We've got disappearances that defy logic, unsolved mysteries that'll twist your mind in knots, and crimes so horrific they spawn the nightmares of generations. These are the stories that keep investigators up at night, the stories that become the dark folklore whispered around campfires. Buckle up, because we're about to embark on a journey into the heart of darkness. And if you think you've heard it all before, trust me, you haven't heard these stories like this. Let's go. Our first stop takes us to the snow-covered back roads of Haverhill, New Hampshire. It's February 9, 2004. Picture the scene. A young woman, 21 years old, her car spun out on a sharp bend, seemingly abandoned. This isn't just any car accident. This is where the mystery of Maura Murray begins. Maura, a nursing student at UMass Amherst, had been acting strangely in the days leading up to her disappearance, emailing professors about a family emergency, searching for hotels in the area, withdrawing a large sum of cash, all very out of character for her. And then there's the accident itself. Witnesses reported seeing Maura near her wrecked car, seemingly unharmed. A bus driver even stopped to offer help, but Mora, visibly shaken, refused. Minutes later, when police arrived, Mora was gone, vanished, into thin air. No footprints in the snow, no sign of a struggle, just an empty car with a smashed windshield. It's like she just stepped out of existence, leaving behind a void of unanswered questions. What happened to Mora Murray? Did she stage her own disappearance? Was she a victim of a random crime on that desolate stretch of road? Or did something darker, more sinister, lurk in the shadows of the White Mountains that night? Theories abound, each more chilling than the last. Some whisper of a secret love affair, others of a desperate escape from a troubled past. But the truth, much like Mara herself, remains elusive. Investigators found traces of red wine in Mora's car, hinting at a possible drinking and driving incident. There were printed directions to Vermont found in the car, but where was she ultimately headed? And then there's the detail of a box of hair dye purchased just days before her disappearance, suggesting a possible desire for a fresh start. Years have passed, yet the mystery of Mora Murray lingers like a ghost story whispered on a cold winter's night. Did the unforgiving wilderness swallow her whole, claiming another victim to its icy embrace? The questions remain, as haunting and cold as the winter night, Mora vanished. Our next descent into darkness takes us to the sun-drenched streets of 1960s California, where a different kind of monster was born. A predator who reveled in fear, who toyed with authorities, and who, to this day, remains a chilling enigma the Zodiac Killer. Imagine receiving a cryptic message, a jumble of symbols and ciphers, each one a taunt, a promise of more violence to come. That's the terrifying reality faced by law enforcement and the public alike as the Zodiac terrorized Northern California, leaving a trail of blood and cryptic clues in his wake. From the Lover's Lane shooting in Benicia to the brutal stabbing at Lake Berryessa, the Zodiac's crimes were as brazen as they were terrifying. He targeted young couples, often in secluded areas, striking with a chilling blend of brutality and calculated precision. But what truly set the Zodiac apart, what cemented his place in the annals of criminal infamy, were the letters. Handwritten messages, often sent to newspapers, filled with bizarre symbols, cryptic codes, and chilling boasts of his crimes. He craved attention, recognition, a twisted legacy carved out in fear and uncertainty. 
Some of the ciphers were cracked, revealing rambling messages filled with misspellings and a disturbing god complex. The Zodiac claimed to be collecting slaves for the afterlife, boasting of his perfect crimes and threatening to escalate his attacks if his demands for attention weren't met. He became a phantom, a boogeyman lurking in the shadows of everyday life, his symbol, a circle with a cross through it, a chilling reminder of his unseen presence. He turned the act of sending mail, a mundane part of daily life, into an exercise in terror. No one knew when or where he would strike next, leaving entire communities living on edge. The Zodiac case became an obsession for investigators and armchair detectives alike, with countless theories and potential suspects emerging over the years. Was he a disgruntled ex-military man? A frustrated artist seeking a twisted form of fame? Or was he something far more sinister? A predator who simply vanished into the fog of time? His true identity a chilling secret taken to the grave? Despite decades of investigation, the Zodiac Killer's identity remains a mystery. His true motives shrouded in the same darkness that cloaked his crimes. The letters, those chilling dispatches from the abyss, remain unsolved, a testament to the enduring power of fear and the seductive allure of the unknown. Our final stop takes us deep into the heartland of America, to a place where the line between reality and nightmare blurs, Plainfield, Wisconsin. Here, in a seemingly unremarkable farmhouse, resided a man whose crimes would inspire some of the most iconic horror films of all time, Ed Gein. Imagine the most disturbing scene from your worst nightmare. Now, amplify that horror tenfold, and you might begin to scratch the surface of what awaited investigators within the walls of Ed Gein's isolated farmhouse. This wasn't just a crime scene. It was a grotesque gallery of human remains, a macabre testament to a mind consumed by darkness. The year was 1957, when authorities, investigating the disappearance of a local shopkeeper, stumbled upon Gaines' charnel house of horrors. What they discovered would forever etch itself into the annals of true crime, a case so profoundly disturbing that it seemed ripped from the pages of a horror novel. Upon entering Gaines' home, Investigators were met with an overwhelming stench of decay. And then, they saw it. A human heart, impaled on a bedpost. But that was just the beginning of the descent into madness. The house yielded a horrifying collection of human trophies, skulls made into bowls, skin fashioned into lampshades and clothing, a belt made of human nipples. It was a scene so horrific, so depraved, that it defied rational explanation. Gain, a seemingly unremarkable handyman, had been exhuming bodies from local cemeteries for years, driven by a twisted fascination with anatomy and a desire to become his own deceased mother, to whom he had a deeply unhealthy attachment. He wasn't content with simply collecting the dead. He sought to wear them, to inhabit their skin in a grotesque mockery of life. News of Gaines' crimes sent shockwaves across the nation. The image of the Butcher of Plainfield, a seemingly ordinary man harboring such unimaginable darkness, became forever seared into the public consciousness. Gaines' case became a chilling reminder that evil can lurk beneath the most unassuming exteriors, that sometimes the most terrifying monsters are not mythical creatures, but flesh-and-blood humans capable of unimaginable cruelty. His crimes inspired a generation of horror filmmakers, influencing iconic films like Psycho, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and The Silence of the Lambs. The character of Buffalo Bill, with his skin suits and macabre mementos, is directly based on Ed Gein, a testament to the chilling legacy of a man whose name has become synonymous with the darkest depths of human depravity. Well, there you have it, my fellow explorers of the dark side. We've journeyed through the unsettling, the unexplained, and the downright horrifying. We've confronted the chilling enigma of Maura Murray's disappearance, grappled with the cryptic terror of the Zodiac Killer, and peered into the abyss of Ed Gein's House of Horrors. If you're still with me, congrats. 
you've got a stronger stomach than most. But seriously, these stories remind us that the world can be a dark and mysterious place, full of shadows and secrets we may never fully understand. Thanks for joining me on this journey into the heart of darkness. Don't forget to hit that like button if you dared to brave these stories with me, subscribe for more explorations into the world of true crime, and share this video with your fellow true crime enthusiasts. Until next time, stay curious, stay safe, and keep the lights on.